Greetings YouTube, my name is Stuart and on my channel I show you how to make the most of your gear as a street and travel photographer. I'm a photographer and travel writer based in South Korea and on my channel I talk about street photography in Asia, my journey as a street photographer and the gear that I use. So if you enjoy those types of videos be sure to hit subscribe for more videos posted weekly. Now I know the title of this video is how to turn your Sony A6000 series camera into a Fuji X100F and that's what this video is about but it's going to be centered around a lens and that's this lens over here the sony 20 millimeter f 2.8 pancake lens or, or the sel 20 f 28 if you're looking for a model number so because of that this is a video of i would say two parts something resembling a lens review and then also talking about the photography experience with this lens now because of the form factor of this lens it is known as a pancake lens that is a lens which is considerably flat and doesn't really protrude from the front element of the camera so a few examples of these lenses include the canon 24 mm f 2.8 pancake lens the canon 40 mm f 2.8 pancake lens and yes the lens found on the fuji x100 f the 23 mm f 2 lens that would also count as a pancake lens now predictably almost all pancake lenses are a fixed focal length or prime lenses so you can't zoom in and out of them and as mentioned this is a 20 mil lens for the Sony APS-C mount uh, your full frame equivalent would be about 30 millimeters so this review wouldn't be a review without a bit of a backstory and I had some very personal reasons for wanting to pick up this lens now about four years ago I traveled India for two weeks and the setup there that I had was a Canon 1200D cheap little Canon 1200D body and this little 24 mm pancake f 2.8 lens and this was a very cheap setup i'd say no more than 300 dollars at most so very cheap definitely more on the budget end but i just really loved the results that the setup gave me it was so light so i could literally take it anywhere it was inconspicuous and for me that's probably you know the most enjoyable photography shooting experience I've ever had. My gear wasn't particularly advanced, it wasn't particularly fancy, but because of the form factor, um, you know, so light, so small, shooting became a very enjoyable experience for me. And the results were amazing. I mean, you know, back then I would say I was a relative novice. I definitely wasn't as clued up as I am now when it comes to all the photography terms and you know, the technicalities of it. So ever since then, I've been searching for a setup which could emulate this. And, you know, this is where cameras like the Fuji X100F and you know the Ricoh GR2, GR3 come in. They're these great little cameras that are so fantastic for travel and street photography. They're really portable. And I really believe that this Sony 20mm pancake lens can kind of emulate that and uh, effectively turn your Sony A6000 range into a Fuji X100F. Now, before I got the Sony 20mm lens, I actually had the Sony 16 to 50mm kit lens. And this is pretty much the standard kit lens that comes with a lot of Sony uh, Alpha cameras, Alpha range cameras. So, you know, it's a 16mm lens at the wide end, 50 at the tight end, um, f3.5, so it's not particularly fast. You do have a bit of a zoom range, which is nice. It can be versatile as a, as a beginner lens, you know, it's not bad but um, it's not particularly sharp wide open and you know I would much rather throw it in the bin than take it traveling with me to be very honest with you don't really like the lens at all it was one of the reasons why I, literally the first lens I got was like a Sigma the Sigma 30 mm which again I use regularly consistently for all my videos so I had the Sony 16 to 50 mm I wasn't really using it and my plan was to trade it for the Sony 20 mm at a camera shop and that's pretty much what ended up happening Happening, traded it in and I ended up paying around $120 for the Sony 20mm lens which if I bought it new would have cost me $250 despite reading a few reviews on the Sony 20mm pancake none were really conclusive as to how it performed you know some reviews said it was decently sharp other reviews said it was really bad and you should avoid it at all costs and so I really didn't have any idea of what to expect when I picked it up. So after taking it for a bit of a test run last weekend, 
The results were, mm, shall I say, lukewarm. Definitely not amazing wide open, not particularly sharp as I expected. And if you are looking for a fast E-mount lens that's nice and wide and sharp, I suggest you look elsewhere. Uh, something like the Sigma 60mm is a fantastic lens. If you want something a bit tighter, go for the Sigma 30mm f1.4, both very fast, very sharp. Uh, if you want sharpness, the Sigma, the Sony Pancake is definitely not what you want to be looking at. But it's not all bad news, you see. Fortunately, if you've got a well-lit subject and you are quite close to your subject, you can get some pretty decent background separation. You know, f2.8 is not the worst aperture wide open, especially for background separation. But if you are shooting busy scenes, then it becomes a lot more difficult, especially wide open because focusing is not amazing. So, you know, you might end up missing your intended subjects, I'd say around 50% of the time. Right, so not an amazing lens, not great IQ. Does that make it a bit of a lemon? Does it, you know, did I waste my money with this lens? The answer is no, I don't think so, and I'll tell you why. Let me paint a bit of a scenario for you right now. It's currently summer in Asia, and uh, where I am, South Korea, the temperatures are probably going to start hitting high 20s, low 30s. It's pretty humid, it's pretty hot, and so the less gear that I need to carry with me, the lighter my gear, the better. Let me show you what I mean. Right, welcome from Hong Kong. As I said, summers in Asia can get almost unbearably hot, right? You've got very high temperatures, very high humidity. It's pretty much like a tropical climate. And so in summer, it can get especially unbearable to walk around with lots of camera gear. Now, the Sony 20mm lens, I, you know, I'm really in love with this lens. And that's all I'm carrying today is my Sony 20mm and my A6300, that's pretty much the size, you know. I've got that little L bracket adding a little bit of bulk. And I've got my Easy Cover rubber cover over my camera just to give a bit more protection. And then I've got my Peak Design strap. But as a travel setup, I've been loving this. And this is how you can really kind of take your Sony A6000 camera, A6000 range camera, and turn it into a Fuji X100F because when you're shooting in broad daylight, there's really no reason for you to be shooting wide open, okay? This lens in particular, I'm going to put up a few sample pictures that I've shot in Hong Kong with this lens, performs spectacularly, to be very honest, from about f5.6 through to f9. And when you're shooting in broad daylight, and let's be honest, a lot of your travel especially is going to be done during the day. You know, a lot of your sightseeing is going to be done, going to be done during peak hours. You really don't need the fastest f1.4 lens for that, if we're being perfectly honest. And as a photographer, that's something that I've come to realize over the course of my kind of travel and street photography journey especially. Because sometimes things like sharpness are so much more important than the speed of your lens and um, you know for that reason I think this little Sony 20mm f2.8 just makes your photography experience so much better super lightweight it's a joy to carry around and I can see now why Fuji X100F owners are so happy ha have you seen Fuji X100F owners they are literally the happiest people in the world they've got these small gorgeous beautiful cameras and you know for me I couldn't be happier with the setup the Sony f 20mm f2.8 pancake lens I think it's vastly underrated as a lens and you know I made a video about the Tamron 17 to 28mm possibly replacing the Sigma 16 and 30mm lenses as a travel combo and you know, I've seen the first impressions of of that lens and it looks like a great lens to be honest for the FE range but uh, it's a little bit too bulky for me and I feel like the Sony 20mm pancake is the perfect compromise I really do I swear by this lens now when I travel and so for that reason I'd encourage everyone to pick up a pancake lens and have a experience of going the minimalist photography route it really does make your shooting experience that much more pleasurable all right that's going to be it from hong kong if you enjoyed this video remember to hit like and subscribe remember as always doing the 1000 sub challenge and slowly slowly inching towards a thousand subs so thank you very much for watching thank you very much for your support and i'll see you guys in the next one